could probably add a lot more rail cars to this. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Let's see what it looks like at nighttime. Yeah. So here's what the train looks like in the test build. See, it's kind of like shooting out puffballs in the front. Yeah, they're kind of like random. <laughs> like it's literally going flying out that way. All right, so let's go start this. Whoa, that's cool as well. Look at that steam's just shooting out. It makes like little puffs. That's awesome. Yeah, look at those wheels turning. It's so cool. This train would have fallen off a cliff. The other one might be for passengers, so you can see a lot of detail. Yeah, this is perfectly natural. Now, let's see how effective this uh, railway buffer is. Come on, Netherlands. Okay, nope. Ooh! It's actually some sound effect of it screeching. And here's just what it looks like in action. Bye. You just go over here, shift right click, and you have this inventory, and you just fill it up, and it should automatically add in um, a container. Okay, not that direction, the other way. And I suppose it doesn't matter which way you're running this. And you can actually walk on the tender. Oh my god, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Be on the side there. Very nice sound effect too. And it can go right to the buffers. Oh wow, the buffers, they don't actually stop the train, do they? It doesn't even look like it's slowing down. <laughs> Hello guys, and welcome back to the Voxel Trains version 4 research pack. Back in the immersive railroading mod on Dauphin's Urban America map. So this actually has been updated from the last time, which I reviewed it like one year ago, I think. So we have a lot of new trains that we're going to take a look at today, including the Union Pacific GTEL. That's like the coolest thing here. But we also have a bunch of tracks, locomotives, some Dutch, and some trains have been updated since then. So this one's actually slightly different. Uh, we'll go over them later. And then we have some Portuguese trains. And then we have some French trains from SNCF. So first off, the Union Pacific Big Blows, third generation GTEL gas turbine. And this is actually built by Bosque. Uh, it's a really cool locomotive, especially since I'm American. That's like the one I recognize the most. It's number 17. Got the nice Union Pacific emblem in the front. And there's just a lot of detail in this. We've got the side fuel tank uh, here. It has a uh, roof riveting detail right there. And there's the horn. And then we have the B unit. There's a lot of these uh, cables linking up the cars. And it says 17B. And then we have a fuel tender here. Very nicely detailed, and it reminds me a lot of the scale trains model, which Bosk partially based this on, although he did say uh, he did his own research as well. But yeah, let's go drive this thing, and I'm going to try to link it up with this intermodal train over there. So first off, let's get inside the cab. Here's what the cab looks like. Um, I believe engineer sits here. <laughs> Got the controls. And uh, yeah, let's uh, go forward. I'm going to try to uh, change the track. So we want to be like two tracks that way on the left. All right, so we're going to approach the curve. And you can see that little rabbit there. I think we have seen them in the last video, actually. Cab forward. And I think we just ran over a bunny. He's actually just stuck on the track, so that's why he was always there. All right, so let's go try to go back the other direction. Since the tracks are already switched, I am going pretty fast, so let me slow it down a little bit. And I think Dauphin added cars since the last time. I don't think I've seen that many. I'm going to slow down a little bit. All right, cool. So we just merged with the other train. So let's go take a look at these intermodal well cars. And they are the 53-foot uh, TTX. And um, yeah, there's an empty train right now. And then to actually fill this up, you just go over here, shift right click, and you have this inventory, and you just fill it up with any material, and it should automatically add in um, a container. So we have that. If you use the paintbrush tool, it could change uh, whatever uh, livery it has. Although all the cars, they're pretty much plain like this. They don't have like a logo. And you don't necessarily have to fill it out all the way. You can do it halfway and then you just get one container by itself. All right, so I just filled up the train with a bunch of containers and let's go. By the way, their containers are actually facing different directions on the top of the bottom. Turn on the bell and let's go out of this uh, rail yard here. There's also this horn. Sounds like the typical American horn. All right, so let's go drive this thing around the map. But yeah, here's what it looks like while you're operating the GTEL. You can go on uh, either side, like move around the cab a little bit. And actually for the cab, originally, if you download this, the cab is actually really low. So I actually had to modify it thanks to Boss for letting me know uh, how to change it. You just go into the configuration files, change the X and the Y values. Here's what it looks like in between the insides. 
of the other car is actually pretty hollow. And you can actually walk on the tender. Oh my god, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> But when you move around, your legs don't move, so that's a little bit funny. Yeah, we're just, uh, chilling on top of this train. I wonder if you can actually go on the cars at the back. Nope. And here's what the train looks like in action, if it's just driving by itself. Very cool design. And you can actually see, like, the wheels. They do spin on the inside. There are no, uh, rotating bearing caps. That might be too challenging, though. And then here we have the container cars. And let's see if you can, yep, yeah, you can kind of stand on it. It's a little bit jittering now, I think, because the train is actually coming to a stop. All right, so we're just rounding the bend. You can see the train uh, right behind me. Very nice. You could probably add a lot more rail cars to this. Uh, but the GTL and the intermodal cars actually came through different times, so it wouldn't be, like, historically accurate. Here's a little town here. I feel like the houses here, they look like a newer design. All right, so we arrived in some kind of city. I see some taxis over there. I wonder if it's kind of based in New York. I have no idea. Probably, probably not. I don't know if New York has this many trains. Oh, look, there's a train station over there. So I guess we can stop there and let's go back the other way. All right, so I'm going to put up my brake up, turn off the engine. And yeah, let's go try another one. So another new train is the Union Pacific S4. So this is an Alco. It's a very old. Uh, but yeah, you can look at all the details. Very nice. Here we got the roof detail. Got a bell inside there. And you can actually uh, walk inside. Let me turn this on. Now let's try to go back where we came from. Okay, not that direction. The other way. Turn on the brake. And I suppose it doesn't matter which way you're running this since it's the shunter, right? So let's go over here. You can pretend you're in the cab or you can stand on the outside. Yep, they have the same horn as well, so this guy's just hauling. But it is pretty cool to stand in front of the train. You can pretend you're the train itself. Just a cab view in, like, first person as well. It's really interesting. Uh, operates. You can look between the sides, you know, walk along the walkways. Oh, they actually have some interior. A little bit of an engine detail on this side. And here's what it looks like when it's running long hood forward. You can see right there in the front, that drop plate's kind of like on an angle. So it doesn't have to be all straight up. But yeah, here's what the perspective would be like if you were operating this in Minecraft. You've got the controls and stuff here. Second chair over here. Going 67 now. Alright, so I think we're here, so let me turn on the brake. Really hard. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at all these trains over here. So first off, let's go from left to right. Uh, so we got this a Dutch train. It's actually kind of English as well. It's made in England. Um, it looks a lot like a British diesel locomotive. Here's what it looks like. But yeah, here's what it looks like inside the cab. Let's turn it on. And let's just try to move somewhere. Oh yeah, it has that tractor engine as well. The tractor engine sound. Oh, that is pretty cool. You can see like the driving rods, they actually move as well. Be on the side there. Very nice sound effect too. And it can go right to the buffers. Oh wow, the buffers, they don't actually stop the train, do they? It doesn't even look like it's slowing down. All these buffers are kind of useless. And apparently this train is called the NS Class 600. It's built by... Xenonius and it's um, and it's an English electric train. It's it's actually going through the blocks. Now let's go take a look at these useless buffers that did not stop the train. So first off, we got this one from the Netherlands. It's a Dutch buffer, a really cool design. And then we have this one. It's actually from Zurich, so I think that's Switzerland. And then we have this one. This is from Portugal. All right. So the next train we have is the NS700. It looks to be a really small switcher from Netherlands Spoorwegen. Uh, which is the Dutch railway, the Netherlands. So let's go turn it on first. Here, oh, cool. It has like a little smoke sound effect. So, okay, this time, apparently the buffers stopped the train this time for some reason. <laughs> the other train, I guess it was too strong, the English. Yeah, that's what it looks like while it's in operation. Really cool front. Is that like a teddy bear? That kind of reminds me of like a teddy bear, but I don't think it is. Um, and then here's the front part. Cool. Oh, no. All right, so next we have the tracks, and these are mainly built by Foxy. So we have a lot of different liveries here. I think, like, there's four of them. Uh, so first off, we have from Switzerland, we have the SBB Cargo livery. This is a Trax 2 AC, so let's look at the interior cab detail. Very nicely made. Let's see what the horn... That's what the... 
All right, that second horn, it kind of sounds like a car horn. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's see the interior. Oh, they do have a cabinet interior inside. Really cool, I think. Are these lights on top? I don't know. And here's what the other side looks like. So it's a dual cab. And also the cool thing, on top they have four pantographs. And there's actually two types of pantographs, so they can use it on uh, multiple systems. Very nicely detailed indeed. And then we have this one. This one is from Railpool, which is Europe in general. Could be a multinational company. Uh, here we only have two pantographs. Right, very cool. And then we have this Hector Rail one, and it's apparently it comes from Sweden. And it's uh, helped by uh, Slender MC help build this. And then we have this one, which I'm not sure what country this is. It's like Mao Traxio. It kind of sounds like it's from Czechia or like Poland or something like that. And then we have that uh, NS Trax back over there, which I don't know if they actually changed it from the last update. I feel like they did add in more details on the side. They need more detail like the traction motors and like these signage here on the side. Yeah, this one's interior is a bit different because in the back here, there's like all these. It's kind of like a maze over here instead of going straight forward across. And here is the redesign NS firm. So I think they changed it from last time uh, by adding these hand railings on the side. Maybe some more uh, detail. I'm not sure. Um, and the side over here, I feel like I didn't see this cabinet there before. And maybe this vent changed as well. And yeah, here's what it looks like on the side. It's a very long train. They also got some different colored uh, seating right here in the back. You can see uh, these chairs are red and these guys are blue. And this got a random thing on the floor. And you could just uh, walk between the cars, I guess, like this. And then next up, we have the SNCF X2200. So these are built by Mafli and they come from France because SNCF is France. Um, here's what the interior looks like. All right, so they kind of sound like an American horn. And then the inside, what is this? It's like a double door here. And then they have like individual compartments here. Okay, maybe that's just like a private section or something. And then we have like the seating arrangement here. Very nice. It would be a cool car to uh, ride in. Fire extinguisher back over there. Do they have a toilet here? Oh, that's the cab control. Um, and then we have one in yellow. I believe that's the same thing. And then back over here, we have some more Swiss trains. And I think they added more detail from last time. I'm not sure exactly though. All right, so behind the shed, there's actually some more locomotives here. And these are built by Joao Fonseca. So these are from Portugal. And the cool thing about this one is actually uh, these two are kind of like the same, but one is actually weathered. And I believe that one is actually like for freight. The other one might be for passengers. So you can see a lot of detail. I really like the art style on this. It looks really cool. And this is the CP2600. So you can see all that detail down below. Really nice uh, voxel looking thing. And then here's what the cleaner version of it. I think for passenger trains. It's still kind of weathered, but uh, not as weathered as this one before. It looks like it dropped in mud or something. And here's what the interior looks like. You see the other train outside the window. A lot of stuff in there. Kind of reminds me of like Lego door here. Oh, there's actually interior as well, like the engine, like the motors and everything, all the cabinets. I really do wonder how they come up with all the ideas for the inside. Like, do they have blueprints or like interior pictures of it? I don't know. And here's what the other one looks like. This time there's like a nice new comfortable blue chair there. Um, I don't know if the inside has changed. Maybe it has. Yeah, I feel like there's more stuff in this one for some reason. So let me turn it on. <laughs> That's their horn. That's what it sounds like. And the bell is like the same for all the trains. And here's just what it looks like in action. Bye. Alright, so next we're gonna take a look at the SBB Stadler Kiss. And this comes from Switzerland, built by Sebastian. Sorry about this thing. It's a bit of Z fighting, but if you actually download the test build of Immersive Railroading, these things actually have interior lighting and then it fixes up this issue right there. So maybe in the future it's gonna be fixed. Um, anyways, here's what it looks like. Very nice, comes from Switzerland. So here's what the interior looks like. Very nice, it looks very comfortable to sit in and operate. So it's just like one, I guess, yeah, the driver's pretty much in the middle. You don't have to share with anyone else, right? Maybe like a guy back there. And that, apparently that's what their whistle sounds like. It's a whistle. Oh, it's it louder over here. So I wonder if there's a horn on the top. Um, here's what the roof looks like. 
No idea what that's supposed to be. Vent over there. And we got a folded up pantograph there. And then here's the other cars. It's a really cool design. It's a double decker train as well. Got the yellow. Um, so maybe that's like first class or second. Then I think the two is for second class. Uh, let's see the window. Yeah, the, this must be like the bike logo and everything. And you can see this train is actually very long and they have different types. There's also like this blue variant, which I don't know if I'm like mixing up trains <laughs> that are not supposed to be together. But whatever, I'm American, so I don't know much about uh, Switzerland. I only built my first Swiss train a couple of days ago as well. And then here's what it looks like on the end. And all these cars, they're apparently different because when I uh, put them in, they were like different items inside the inventory. You know, the first car, you're going to walk through the floor, but the second car, I notice it automatically teleports you to the top. But it is a very nice interior. Got like this like door thing. I think it's a door <laughs> between like the segments. It's also interesting. There's like a signal there. I don't know if that actually does anything. But yeah, let's go move this train. You know, this side's horn doesn't work, so unfortunately. So here's what the train looks like in operation. It's uh, very chill. You can see like the, how the train curves. I like that effect. You see the rest of the train while you're moving. And I suppose that's supposed to be the bathroom over there. Some kind of wheelchair accessible area. And then here we made it to the other side of the cab. Really nice angle here. Apparently the train stopped. So let's see what actually stopped. Uh, maybe we hit a brick wall or something. Okay, so this whole thing is missing. I remember, this is what happened in the last time, so yeah. Um, this train would have fallen off a cliff. Very cool. Yeah, we're just driving along the train. Gotta go back to the station and we're gonna try out the other locomotive. But while we're going there, you can look out at the scenery on the outside. Very cool. Pass by this train station. That's where we started the last video over there. All right, and then we crashed over here instead. All right, so next we have the SNCF BB8500, the Verti and the Fret. And they're both green for some reason. I don't know, does SNCF like the color green? That's what their horn sounds like. Here's what the interior looks like. And there also is an interior segment to this. Both of them, they're pretty much the same, so I think the only difference is pretty much the exterior of the build and then we have the steam locomotive here this is cp0180 and it's by joao fonseca from uh, portugal very cool design lots of like detail here and i wonder if it's our only steam engine in this update i'm not sure uh we have a lot of cars over here in the back there's also this green it's kind of like an observation car in the back that can stand up on the deck yeah, let's go take a look at the interior, what that looks like. There's just a lot of, like, controls in here. Let's turn this guy on. Whoa. That's a really cool horn. Or whistle, rather. Whistle! Alright, so let's go start the... Whoa, that's cool as well. Look at that. Steam's just shooting out. Alright, so let's go. Oh, cool. It makes, like, little puffs. That's awesome. Wow. That's actually a pretty cool train, you know, leave the best for last. Really interesting when I see like these trains, they have like these smoke effects. Whoa. It also sounds cool as well. Wow, look at that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, look at those wheels turning. It's so cool. You can also see there's like a pattern in there as well. Got the whistle there, so... Yeah. I think this would be like the coolest train to operate if you, uh... If I had to pick from all the other trains. Um, anyways, here's what the interior looks like. We got some curtains over there, overhead racks. You can walk in between the car. And here's what the other segment looks like. A little storage rack, maybe baggage area. Oh, bathroom. Yay. Always like, what the heck is this, a closet? I don't know. Okay. I guess that, that is the door to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, waste bin over there. And then here's the cooler one. I feel like I've seen this one before. Like the seats, they look like chocolate bars. I just need to slow it down so it's like a reasonable speed, you know. Alright, so anyways, back over here, we were taking a look at this car. And then the last car, I think that would be the most interesting to like, whoa, what the heck. To look at, uh, fire extinguisher, okay, these are gates over here. The windows are blinded, and I don't know, I think we just crashed into the other train. Then we have this doorway, so, ooh, okay, this is like really old style. Uh, way to sit between cars. It's like little park benches almost and it looks like it's really uh, round too And here's what the back looks like very cool indeed. Yeah 
Wow, look at all that. Is that steam or something? Or what is that fog thing? Yo, look at it. You can see the... Wow. That's actually the steam locomotive steam just coming out from the front. Uh, but yeah, here's what it looks like in the back. If you were like walking between car, you can see it says CP right there. I think over there, maybe that's like an emergency brake down there. I'm not sure. And then there's even some roof detail with some weathering. So it looks uh, more worn out and realistic, I guess. All right, so here's what the train looks like in operation. See it coming down the mountain as it comes. All right, so let's go watch it cross this bridge over here. Hopefully it gets faster. See, it's kind of like shooting out puffballs in the front. But yeah, they're kind of like random. <laughs> like it's literally going flying out that way. I wonder if that's intentional. All right, so I'm going to put more juice into it. Go faster. Now look at the valve gear in action. I wonder like how much effort goes into like animating all this as well. That's what it looks like. Crossing the bridge. Really nice, cool scenic view over onto that mountain and the, it's going through a tunnel apparently. And there she goes. Yeah, this train's just moving by itself. I don't think I put anything on the controls. You can see the throttle, it's in neutral, so... I don't know why it's moving by itself. Let's see if what happens if I put another train. You see, okay, yeah, that train's also moving by itself. And this one's supposed to be a BR-40. I don't know if it's uh, new in the update or we've seen it before. But <laughs> that's what one half of it looks like. They all combined to one train now. Let's see how effective this uh, railway buffer is. Come on, Netherlands. Okay, nope. Ooh, it's actually some sound effect of it screeching. Let's see if I put another one. If it Okay, so if I put two of them, then it's like super effective. And here is the tracks in action. We've got Hector Rail. You know, the weird thing about this Portuguese train actually has like two different levels over here. We got the throttle and the reverser, so I hope they work the same way. So yeah, this is perfectly natural. Pulling a container train, double stack container train. You know, it's really subtle, but you can actually see the train sways a little bit. Right there, you can see it swaying. That is a really cool effect. So here's what the train looks like in the test build of immersive railroading. You can see it fixed that lighting, the Z fighting in the front. And there's also a new interface for the controls. You can see that uh, miles per hour there, the miles per hour train brake. Let's start on the brake, let's see what that happens. Yeah, you can see these all these dials, you can move them around. And also the back car now has the lighting, so you can see all the lights, they uh, shine brightly. Now the reason why I didn't want to film with a test build is because sometimes if you go far away, like the cars become yellow, which I don't like how it looks. But at nighttime, it's more apparent so you guys can see it looks really cool at nighttime. All these light up and they give a nice uh, ambience. Here's what the car looks like inside at nighttime. And here's what the front looks like. Got nice, uh, these three headlights. And there's actually like a mode where you can actually uh, make it so only one headlight turns on. I believe that's a neutral. If you're just running it normally, it's gonna have those two headlights. It's uh, really cool. Let's just see what it looks like at nighttime. Yeah. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, it's a really nice effect. Is that the moon? It's like so bright. <laughs> Oh, bye-bye. The GTEL also has it and it lights up a little bit at the front. Yeah, I think I'll just leave the video here. Yeah, that's pretty much it for, you know, Voxla Trains version number four. They just added a ton of more trains and hopefully they can keep on adding more in the future. I know they've got a lot on the works, but again, it is a lot of work to make all these Voxla Trains and make them all detailed. Big props to everyone who actually designed these trains. And if you guys want to check it out for yourself, check out the link in the description. And I also leave a link to their Discord if you need any help with anything. And by the way, a lot of people were asking like, how do you make these trains move without fuel? Cause usually you need fuel for them. But the way you do it, you just go into this control and then right over here, it says config. And then we have, I set it to the divide key. Oh, and you just go to config balance and then you turn all these to false so you see fuel required change that as well as like radio equipment and everything else and then you can run them without fuel whatever you like which i think is the best method although if you want realism and you want to role play i guess you just use the fuel method but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you do remember hit that like button down below 
subscribe if you had already. Let me know in the comments what you guys think and you can leave some feedback for these guys. Um, but anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Wow, this one's actually still attached to this Portuguese one.